guys, this is an explanation of how to perform a titration, and I'm going to do an acid-base titration. Um, so this is my burette. Um, the base, the sodium hydroxide, which will be your stock solution, that always goes into the burette. Um, down here in this Erlenmeyer flask, I have um, an unknown acid, and I'm going to titrate that, which means I'm going to um, react it with the acid with the sodium hydroxide until we reach the equivalence point. Now, to know when we reach the equivalence point, we have to add an indicator. Um, this is bromothymol blue, and so we want to make sure we put a few drops, three or four maybe, in here. Now, bromothymol blue, five, um, as you can see here, is yellow when it's in an acid solution. Um, it's going to turn color, and it's going to turn, we're, what we're looking for is this color right here, which is the, uh, correlates to a pH of about 7.5. What's going to happen is we're going to get to a color down here somewhere, maybe yellow or green or something like that. And what we're looking for is one quick twist of the stopcock here to turn it from yellow or green to blue. Once, we, once that happens, we stop. We're at our equivalence point. A couple things about this. When I have the, the sodium hydroxide in here, first thing I'm going to want to do is make sure I got the air bubbles out of the tip. So I'm going to open the stopcock, give it a little flick, and there we go. I'm going to check the level up here. Just make sure it's somewhere below the zero mark. It is. I have all the um, air bubbles out of the tip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to read my initial volume. And so I'm going to use this zebra card right here to give me some contrast so I can read this volume right here. So it ends up, this is about 1.48 milliliters. Now, a couple things about that. Remember, with these burettes, we always read two places past the decimal. Always two past the decimal. And the next is these burettes are built so that the, um, we can measure how much liquid we are adding to another container. So we start with zero at the top, and this one has 25 at the bottom. Don't do any, don't do any addition or subtraction or anything like that. We're just reading the numbers directly off of the burette. So my, my initial volume, and I would put this in my data table, would be, for example, 1.48 milliliters. Once I have that, I'm going to take my Erlenmeyer flask with my unknown acid in it. The bromothymol blue is in there also. I'm going to add a magnetic stir bar in there. Put it on the stir plate, which we have directly beneath the burette. So now we're ready to start the titration. A uh, couple things about that. The number one most important thing in a titration, the key to a successful titration is patience. So don't be in a hurry to get to the end point. Okay? Um, we want to be as careful and make sure we hit that equivalence point as, as close as we can. The next thing is the technique for turning the stopcock is we want to twist the stopcock 180 degrees each turn. So the stopcock now is perpendicular to the tip of the burette, that's closed. When it's parallel to the tip, it's open. So at first, before we've added any, we know we're, no, we're probably not close to the end point, so we can turn the stopcock somewhat slowly, about like this. And we want to make sure that we're stirring too, by the way. Because with um, this technique, the slower you turn the stopcock, the faster you're titrating because more comes out with each turn. And so we can go f a little bit fast at first with kind of slow twists like that. And what we're looking for is a, a splash of color down in here. When we see that, that means we're going to start going slower, which means turn the stopcock faster. And as we get closer and closer to the, the equivalence point, that we'll, we'll know by the, that flash of color lasts longer or we get that green color in here with the bromothymol blue. We're going to go really slow, which means we're going to twist 180 degrees really fast. So I'm already seeing sort of a splash, but not too much of color. So remember, patience is key. I'm going fast by turning slowly.
Now it's starting to last a little bit longer, so I'm going to go a little bit slower, but turning faster. You'll also notice I have a piece of white paper underneath. That, that will help to see the color change more easily. You see how the color is lasting a little bit longer? That means we're getting close, so I'm going to go slower by twisting faster. Each time I wait for the color to disappear before I twist it again. It's hanging around. There, it's getting really close now. Watch that. Look at that. Almost, right? So I'm going to twist it really fast. Almost, one more. Maybe two. Not quite. See that? Can you see that green color there? That means we're getting really, really close. We want, but we want that blue, the 7.5. Really quick twist. Let's see. We have to see how it took a long time, but still it went back to green, so we're not quite there yet. Quick twist. So patience, right? And see, it turned back to green, so. Another really quick twist. Almost. Is it turning? Looks like it's turning back to green. I bet you this one's going to be the last one. Let's see. See how fast I twisted that? And there we go. So the key is it was green or yellow, and then one quick twist made it turn blue. Um, seven po basically, pretty close to the 7.5 color here. Now, really important, now that we've finished the titration, we need to make sure that we read the final volume. So just like we read the initial volume, we're going to hold the zebra card up to the burette and read this two places past the decimal. And so that looks like it's about 11.61 milliliters or so. Write that in your data table and you're finished that run.